Hi guys, Sugar here with a new video and this video is the long-awaited RBG tier list video that I've promised you guys since Dragonflight and I want to say RBGs are really a great and fun brackets to play in. I think the problem with that bracket is the elitist mindset that a lot of people have around RBGs. If arenas were very uh, picky with the partners that you actually decide to group up, I think RBGs is even worse at higher rated. If you're playing like an off-meta spec, often than not you will not get an invite and you will have to link an achievement and most people are actually linking the achievements from three expansions past and they feel like it is actually a worthy achievement to link. But um, my opinion is it should be a bit less elitist and that's why I urge Blizzard to actually make a solo QRBG form of bracket where it's 6v6 um, and you can actually like again do real RBGs in a, like a mini map format and make it competitive they will have to have their own twist but I think it's going to be a very good bracket to begin with. Um, but in general, I think I think the elitist mindset that a lot of RBGers have uh, is a detriment for actually the population of the RBG like bracket. But uh, that's my opinion. Of course, if you have a guild, you will not feel that. Or if you make your own groups, you will not feel that. Or if you're like a big streamer, like again that has thousand viewers or whatever, they will have an easier time to group. Me myself, I don't really promote uh, the groups that I make so basically I'm like a nobody or nobody I'm trying to make a group and I try to make it as fun as possible for everyone but whatever now let's talk about the tier list I wanted to preface that before I'd made the tier list but basically we have S tier which is the god tier specs a tier it is meta B tier it is good C tier it means that it is underpowered D tier it means that the stars need to align to actually make it work and F tier means that they really need to to get some love in PvP because they don't work in that bracket for example now let's talk about blood decay first so you will have timestamps below where we are going to jump from class to class and then you can also just skip ahead or skip back whenever you want to hear an opinion about specific specs. Now, Blood Decay, I think it is not that great in RPGs. Uh, many times I played against, they were basically the hostage bot, basically gripping, multi-gripping uh, healers to Oblivion and try to make it a 9v9 kind of game. Uh, which is a possible like play style, but I feel like it's not very great and that's why for me it's a D tier and stars needs to align and you will have to win 9v9 or and even then healers could just also ignore you and try to get away. Evokers can easily get away from a blood decay. So um, that tactic doesn't work all the time. Uh, Frost decay, I think it's I think one of the best, if not the best melee um in rbgs i will put it in s tier because i do rate frost decays very high especially the target callers that are actually doing big double grips into blind into chill streak with the big stun uh, frost worm stun that is going to stun everyone and again with their own uh, aoe stun that they can actually apply with remorseless winter and they have a lot of damage obliterates actually critting for 100k and even higher so i feel like a frosty case is really really strong they do apply a lot of diseases just by pressing howling blast and it is actually a very good um 1v1 or 1v2 -er. so i feel like in multiple maps where you will have to do 1v1s or 1v2s uh, Frost DK can really win and uh, come out ahead. Now it's quite squishy, so you will have good healers that has to heal. But if you are a target, target caller, generally you are the priority heal uh, for the healers. Uh, Unholy DKs, I feel like they're just not as good as their um, bigger brother, I would say, with Frost DKs. They don't have an AoE stun. They actually have a pet, which is getting cleaved by multiple specs. Now that Feral Druids are very, very popular in team fights, your pets are going to die quickly. There is nothing you can do about that except re-summon it, but again, it can just die again, and then you're quite useless. In some maps where you're going to do 1v1s, 1v2s, or 2v2s, you're going to be better, but I would say in some maps, like for example, Eye of the Storm, I would say uh, Arati Basin, where that is all of team fights. Uh, I would say Warson Gulch, or even um, like um, 
peaks uh, twin peaks it's going to be quite hard for you to actually exist so uh, i think unholy decay is a good spec because it does a lot of disease damage splash damage and it's going to be good for overall dps but i think that the kill pressure that you can have in arenas is not translatable translatable in rpgs or at least it feels like that now havoc demon hunter i think is also one of the best mini spec now do i rate it as high as frost decay i think they have a lot of splash damage there they do have a lot of mobility i think it's very map dependent i will put it in s tier because for me this is also a god tier spec in in uh, rbgs they have darkness which is again going to be very good in in like moderate team fights the hunt that can also do a lot of damage and again it does splash damage with the dot um it has also a lot of damage just in general like death sweep again you will have to play safe because you do get killed in stuns but you have to also actually get away you can just also just run away in team fights you can also go for the flag carrier easily easier you have also great cc potential with the aoe stuns or eruption for example or banish so you have a lot of ways to actually be useful for your group a vengeance demon hunter is for me probably the second best tank and I'm going to spoil you that the Guardian Druids are probably the best tanks at the moment. But I'm going to put Vengeance Demon Hunter in A tier, which is meta. Um, I think Vengeance Demon Hunter is a great replacement for a Guardian Druid if you don't find a Guardian Druid. In general, people are like trying to be elitist and get a Guardian Druid. But a very good Vengeance uh, Demon Hunter, not a PvE one, but really a dedicated Vengeance Demon Hunter is going to do a lot of good for this bracket i think in general uh, you're going to have uh, a lot of ways to be effective and in general you're going to be uh, very sought after once people do realize that you're actually very good and you do sustain uh, quite a lot i think damage is really bad though so you, you're not like a garden druid where you could soak up and do a lot of damage as well but um i think for flag carriers and also they have a great spec, so they have also Havoc Demon Hunter, so in some maps you don't need to go for tank, you can just go Havoc, and you will be also very good. A lot, a lot of Garden Druids, they don't really have the luxury to switch to Balance or Feral, because they are like Guardian Specialists, they don't really need to change, but a, a like Vengeance Demon Hunter will have the easier time to actually change into Havoc, because the playstyles are quite the same, and um you're you're going to do as good i would say as a dps now balance druid i think i'm going i'm going to be not a trendsetter i think it's a s tier spec it's still very good you can do a aoe starfall build if you really so desire but right now what i see and what i talk about with other balance druids they do now play a like solo uh, t target spec that they can actually play to actually obliterate people whenever they are actually in um, in um, a scenario in um, uh, celestial alignment excuse me so basically they're going to do a lot of damage they can also play like a full moon build because they will have a lot more time to actually press full moon and it does a lot of damage again i think being stealthed the options to being stealthed the options to actually survive damage because of bear form uh, the options to actually do a root beam on multiple heals if they are clumped up or even just one healer can save you just a team fight in general i think cyclone is one of the best um ccs that you can apply because it does not break except with a master spell um so i think it's going to be quite good for you as a balanced druid uh feral druids i think they are very surprising i would say if you would say that in shadowlands like feral druids being a tier you i would say you're crazy but right now i think it's a meta spec it does a lot of splash damage it does die quickly again if you're focusing a feral druid they just like die like instantly but if you're playing like a melee cleave and you don't really have a, a lot of time to actually choose the right target, a Feral Druid will do multi, like multi dots. They will do a lot of damage, a lot of bites because they do get procs for the from the Apex Predator, and you're going to have a great time as a Feral Druid. You can also play like the role of a rogue because you do have a restyle whenever you are in um, Asha Main's um, uh, form. So basically, you can actually uh, restyle 
for 30 seconds you can do it once and if you're a night elf even better because you can do a third time so basically you are like a rogue although you don't have sap so you cannot really gain time it's pretty much also more lethal than a rogue in general so you're going to do a lot of damage people are not going to be sustaining versus you and in general you, you're going to have a great time i think feral druids um, again, I think rogues are quite irreplaceable in my books. I think you will have to play a rogue, and the Feral Druids just needs to play like a warrior, just basically cleave everyone and try to uh, kill someone with the, with those bleeds and with those cleaves. In general, a very good spec. I think Garden Druid, again, uh, no surprise, it is S tier. I think it's the best tank spec. Uh, it's a lot less durable and stronger than uh, Shadowlands because the legendary doesn't uh, anti CC anymore. But I think being stealthed, being um, mobile, being just Garden Druids, being actually very potent self-healers, uh, I think Garden Druids are just too good to not take. Of course, if you don't find a Garden Druid, I think Vengeance Demon Hunter are actually a very good uh, potential uh, tank for your team. But um, I think if you have a choice between a Garden Druid and a Vengeance Demon Hunter, you will probably take Garden Druid all the time now restoration druid um hmm. so for me restoration druid is actually very good but i think it's not the same as uh, in arenas because you have multiple targets and you cannot spend a lot of gcds to heal everyone at the same time it's very hard it's not like a disc priest where you have atonement healing which is easier to apply to everyone and then you start doing damage and you will have some splash healing as well i think restoration druid are actually not bad because they are actually very good at following tanks and in general uh, being stuffed is a option for you as a restoration druid so you can actually take your fights a bit easier and again scout for the team that you're playing so I think Restoration Druid is for me a beat your spec. Again, it's a good tier. So it means that it is actually a good spec to play. I just think there is many more healers that are actually better right now. Um, if you're talking about a big DPS, we have Devastation Evokers. They are not overly played. If you see the statistics, there is not a lot of Devastation. But you have a lot of damage. It is also very hard to catch one. And it does die very quickly but you have the mobility you have the damage you have the aoe pressure and in general if you want to kill a whole team you can actually do deep breath fire breath even though it's nerfed it will do still a lot of damage and it will also dispel to everyone so imagine they have a lot of buffs you're going to aoe dispel them and they are kind of screwed uh, for me it is a good spec i could say meta but there is just not many devastation evokers right now and i feel like um, it would be a disservice to the other specs I'm going to put in ATM. For me, it's going to be very strong. I think it's a hidden gem though. If you're playing a Devastation Evoker, in general, you're going to have a great time. Um, but again, I think people need to realize it first before they actually um, take more Devastations in their team. I think they can really work well into a Caustic Cleaves with like two uh, target colors like slash melees like let's say a frosty k and then a warrior would be a fantastic combo where the frosty k will just aoe stun with the deep breath from devastation evokers you're going to probably obliterate the whole team if they are like aligned onto one point preservation evokers uh, they're going to be exceptional because they have huge mobility in my eyes they do take the cake in that department they do have great aoe healing they have also great clutch cds which is also aoe and just in general i think it's very hard to actually ca catch a preservation of guard in arenas it's a bit like easier to do that but in um rbgs i think it definitely is a meta spec uh, it's very good very strong it has aoe fire breath again you can also spec into uh dispelling the the hots again it's going to be very strong as well um i think in general you you will have a great time as a preservation evoker uh, people just need to ca catch on again the same as arenas uh, how it took a bit of time to actually realize that preservation evokers is actually very strong right now you should also realize that it could be very well s tier if they are played a bit more bm hunter i would say the, the issue is the pets are dying 
So the stars need to align to not have specific team maps, ma uh, team fight maps. If you have like more soloist um, role, you can actually make it work because pets are not going to die in 1v1 situations. But in AoE and versus ferals that are actually pro prominent into RBGs right now, um, your pets are going to die very quick and you will feel like you're useless most of the time. And it's the same for survival, to be honest. Uh, you could put it in C tier, but I think I'm going to put it at the same tier as BM because it, it can't function. It will have uh, to need a specific role, which is basically sitting flags, which is better to have a rogue do that and a garden druid, for example, two stealthies. Well, for example, survival hunter can only stealth one for one minute, and then you have like a CD. So even though the damage is very nice, even though the AOE pressure you can have is also very nice, I think having your pet die very quickly just becomes a very hard burden to have if you are a survival hunter. Uh, MM hunters are going to be a bit better, but since the, the removal of double tap, I feel like the damage is a bit lower. Um, it is underpowered right now. They do need something in general to make it make up for the uh, damage loss. But now you have Salvo, so basically you can actually volley a whole group. They will have all explosive shots on them, and then you will do some big AoE pressure. But if you know you're playing versus a marksmanship hunter, in general, you're going to train them down, and you're going to kill them very quickly. Again, you cannot play with pets because pets will die, although marksmanship hunter don't really suffer from that. You will suffer roar of sacrifice though, that will be gone. So you will have maybe to, to play something else like a PvP talent that is not revolving around pets. But um, I think in general marksmanship hunter since double tap, I think if the double tap was still there, it would be easier B or A tier. But right now it's a gimmick with volley every 45 seconds to actually explosive shot everyone at the same time. Which is for me not the best solution if you are a marksmanship hunter. Arcane Mage for me, um, although the play rate is not very high, I think they are better than they are actually showing. The problem is Polymorph is something you can break. Um, everything from them is actually breakable. Um, they do get trained pretty easily, although I think the damage is very nice. I do rate them B tier. I think they are a good spec. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but I think. In general, if they can lock their eyes onto one target and they're doing with a Radiant Spark uh, go, for example, they can actually one-shot someone very quickly. Um, but outside of that, though, they are one of the classes that are very close to being C tier because they only have the damage and invisibility, mass invis invisibility. Kleptomania, actually very nice versus uh, tanks, for example. You steal everything. And they are like left without hots, so that could also help to kill the, the tank. It's actually a very good tank killer in general if they have stacks on them because of the flag, and then you go for an arcane surge, like go in general, they're not going to survive. But that's a gimmick from them to have, and not every map has a flag um, carrier, so um, that's why it's beat here. I think fire mage. <laughs> I want to put it in F tier, but I'm going to put it in D tier. To be honest, F tier, I feel I feel like I'm not going to put a lot of specs there, or maybe no specs. But I'm thinking Fire Mage, they, they are also very, very um, bad. They will have to either play like a casted talent tree, where you're actively going to cast a lot of spells instead of just instant casts. The problem is, it's so easily killed it will be killed in an instant you don't have the the, the tankness from an arcane mage you don't have the casted abilities like a frost mage for example with a lot of slows fire mage is really combust or die and in general combust can be stopped by just cc uh and it is also very predictable and it is stoppable and if you're playing versus a warlock he can just Curse of Weakness you, you will have to get a Dispel, again it's a, if it's an Affliction Warlock, Dispel is very dangerous for a healer, so there is some situations where your Fire Mage will not exist. Um, Frost Mage, I think they are a bit less good than the Arcane Mage, but I'm going to put it on the same tier. Um, they have the damage, they have the Cleave damage, they can actually go Glacial Spikes and again doing a lot of damage. Uh, they can also play without glacial spike and basically just ice and spam. You don't really need to cast a lot. Um, I think again CC is subpar, so that's, that's why it's very close to C tier with Arcane. But I think the damage can save them from um, being C tier. I think the damage is very nice. I think on some maps you can really win one v twos easily. 
Uh, you can actually ruin some rogues. Uh, again, if they're like opening on you and you play with the anti-stun blink, basically you're blinking outside of stuns. You can actually make sure that they're going to cloak very fast and then it's pretty much a GG. So you can actually win that matchup very quickly. But it depends on you and your capacity, so that's actually be good. I think in general, Frost Mage and Arcane Mage, if they're not played well, they are easily C tier. And whenever they are good and they are good mages, I think B tier is actually a fair uh, tier for them. Uh, Mist Weaver is going to be the first uh, S tier healer in my books. I think it's one of the best. Um, they are good at actually sustaining people they have a lot of cds revival is such a great ability to press whenever you see an affliction wall for example doing soul rot your first global should be revival and you're going to be golden again there is um some difficulties for them to survive but in rbgs it's very hard to actually go for the mistweaver because again they are very mobile and you don't want to overextend too much so that's why for me, Mist Weavers is probably one of the best, if not the best healer uh, on this tier list. You, I might be wrong, so please let me know in the comment section below. But from the what I've seen and what I've talked about with Mist Weavers, I think Mist Weavers is a great spot in RPGs. Um, Brewmaster, well, I must say there's not a lot of Brewmasters. Uh, I think it's better than Blood Decay though. Because they do have mobility, they do have great peel abilities, and they do have some kind of damage. I think it's C tier. Um, but I think, again, it's very hard to not take Vengeance, Demon Hunters, or a Garden to it. Um, based on the fact that Piru Master is actually very, very squishy. It does die very quickly. So if you go for the flag as a Brew Master, you might just die instantly by the rogue. So it's actually very hard, very hard to actually make it work. Um, I'm not suggesting to not play it. I'm suggesting to actually brace yourself if you're playing with one or if you're playing yourself. Um, there is not much I can say to that because I don't see a lot of Brew Master. And the ones I see, they do get destroyed in team fights. They do get destroyed whenever they go for the flag. But they have a lot of annoying abilities that they can actually press to be very annoying and very hard to actually deal with. Um, but outside of that, I think it's a C tier spec. Uh, Windwalker. So Windwalker, it's actually a very good spec in one-shotting people. They have utility, but I think the problem is they do die very quickly. Uh, it's hard for me to put it in uh, the same tiers as Frost Decay and Demon Hunter. And it's also very hard to put it at the same level as a Feral Druid because I feel like Feral Druid is just so much stronger. So for me, um, Windwalkers are going to be B tier, probably close to A tier. They might go A tier if I'm like restructuring the actual um, tier list. But um, yeah, I think it's a good spec, very easily to kill. Um, they have some good one shots again leg sweep if they are if it if it's done correctly you're going to leg sweep a lot of people at the same time and then you go for a big go um but personally i whenever i make a group i think windwalkers is one of them that are not really in my mind whenever i'm actually inviting people but that's more or less my maybe um pre um three thoughts that i have around windwalkers uh, that makes me not invite them um, but you could have a huge success with the windwalkers but i feel like just there are other better specs to pick if you're thinking about specific um, aoe um, stunts holy paladin i think holy paladin suffer from being targeted most of the time you're going to die very quickly I think it's not bad, but I think it's also not good. Uh, if I have to judge, again, I'm judging healers with healers. If you if you want to judge like a whole, I think it is going to be B tier because you do need a healer anyways. So if you're, see a if you're seeing a Holy Paladin, you will probably invite them. That's not a problem. But if you have the choice between healers you're going to pick, I think Holy Paladin might be C tier. I think they have like melee wings, which is good, but melee wings just ask them to actually be melee. So it means that they are going to get targeted. If I see a holy paladin next to me, I'm going to say raid group, just go for the holy paladin. And then he gets a bubble and then it's an easy mouse spell in general. You're playing with a priest and you're going to be golden and the paladin will just die very quickly. So for me, 
C tier, it is underpowered. Uh, do they need buffs? I don't really think so right now. Or at least it doesn't doesn't really um, make it easy to to buff it without making it broken. I think they just need a rework in general to actually make it work as a holy paladin. Protection paladin. I think protection paladin is actually not bad. I think it's um if I say top three, maybe top four best tanks. Uh, I think for me it's a good tank spec. Uh, if you don't have a De Avengers De Demon Hunter, you don't have a Garden Druid, I think a Protection Paladin can make it work. Um, they have good damage, good self healing, good peels. They have great ways to actually very but to be very annoying. Um, do I see a lot of Protection Paladins? Not really. Um, but do they deserve to be played a bit more in RPGs? I think so. I think uh, they they really are a great spec. I think it could be better if they are actually a healer. So if you're picking Protection Paladin, they take the healer spot. That would be actually very good. But right now, if you're taking a Protection Paladin and you're taking Garden Druid, you have two tanks. I think it's not possible in RPGs. Um, so you cannot really play without one. Um, like without a three healer setup. And I would put it maybe as a healer. And that would be better for the RBG group. I think um, it has a lot of ways to actually heal, sustain, and be utile for your group. But uh, for now, it's going to be a good spec. Uh, B tier is a right spot for that class. Uh, Retribution Paladin, I think they are easily a A tier spec. They have bubble, they have bobs, they have sacrifice, they have a lot of AOE pressure. Uh, they can just destroy someone at any moment. Um, it's not as easy to play since you do die very quickly, but it depends on you. You should you should not play Shield of Vengeance in RPGs because it just gets popped right away. I think it's better to play with the damage reduction ability um, to actually survive and to actually, again, to most possible damage by surviving. Um, it's, it's, it's good. It's also a good tank killer. Uh, killer. Uh, you can actually do blinding light on a lot of people and then try to do a one shot but you have to coordinate with your discord group if you are on discord uh, i think retribution is one of those specs that are better if you're playing with a pre-made uh, without a pre-made generally you are the target and you're going to die very quickly uh, disc priest is probably the second or first best healer it's, it depends on preference I prefer Disc Priest instead of a Mistweaver, but I feel like some people do prefer Mistweavers over Disc Priest. I like the Atonement healing, I like, I like Mind Control in general, I like Mousy Spell, I like the possibility to have a Mind Games on the kill target, especially if it's a healer. Um, I think in general it's a very good spec. I think it gets buffed more and more and becomes just better and better to play one Disc Priest with your RPG group. Atonement healing is such a great possibility for the disc priest to actually heal and do damage at the same time and you know that damage is very hard right now uh, very high right now so in general if you have a disc priest it will just be higher than without so i think it's a very good spec i think holy priest is kind of the same as the holy paladin they don't really have a lot of aoe healing as well they do have some great cds but it's not aoe so it's single target you're going to have uh, again, you're going to sustain that tank very long, but in team fights where generally games are won, you're going to have a, a bad time. I think if you're facing a disc priest and you're a holy priest, you know he's going to probably overheal everyone while you are going to overheal just one single target. Uh, it's not always the easiest thing to do. You do have great CDs, you have great ways to actually escape death, but in general, I don't think it's enough to cut it to B tier, which is the Restoration Druid um, tier. Now, Shadow Priest, I think it's uh, very good. I think it's better than previously. It has a lot of ways to actually multi-dot. Uh, in my books, it is A tier. I think just not a lot of Shadow Priests actually play RPGs. Um, and you will have to make uh, like plays in your group. That's why I'm actually an advocate for solo queue, because then specs can just play and you don't need to make space for specific comps. Well, for example, right now, if you're thinking about a Caustic Leaf, you're thinking about Balance Druid, Affliction Warlock, Destruction Warlock, but Shadow Priest is probably not the first one you're going to think about. Well, for example, Shadow Priest is actually very good in sustaining, good for damage, good for CC. In general, it's going to be a good spec in RPGs. Um, 
but they're not really the first one you're going to think whenever you're going to make a group. So that's the main problem. Uh, I'm going to put every rogue spec into S tier, uh, basically because they are rogues. You do need rogues. There is a shortage of rogues in RBGs for some reason. Um, While, well, for example, in arenas, you do see a lot of rogues in twos. But in RBGs, a rogue is always sought after. It's always going to be great to invite one because you do need a uh, node sitter and a very good rogue can just ninja the other node very easily. If you're, go if you're a good ghoster, ghosting is going to help you insanely in actually winning games. And you know how many games you lost because the rogue took the other node or how many games you lost because the rogue didn't know when to ghost or not, and um, I think Outlaw, Assassination, and Subtlety, they're going to be equal in my books. If I have to put like choose one of those three specs, I would say Subtlety is probably the best. Double Vanish, it has ways to actually one-shot someone. You have also a Shadowy Duel, um, that's, again, a very good spec. Assassination Rogues has a damage, so straight damage you're going to destroy someone if you really want to. And Outlaw is going to be the most durable spec if you want to, to be durable versus multiple specs, like versus multiple melees on the node. But I think in general, uh, if you want to choose a spec to play in RBGs, I would suggest to play Subletty. And learn Subletty. It's not easy for everyone, but you can learn Subletty. And I know you're going to tell me, but... Togre, we see a lot of S tier specs because I said in the beginning of the video, I think, uh, that RBGs are really a great bracket right now for playing PvP. And because there is so many specs that are actually very viable, but people are very elitist for no reason. Um, I think having a Frost Decay or a Demon Hunter or a Havoc Demon Hunter in your group is actually very, very good. So is a Balance Ridge, for example. I'm going to sort this uh, once I'm done with the tier list. Uh, Elemental Shaman. Is going to be one of the best um, casters, but I think it's more an A tier than a S tier because it is very hard to actually multiple flame shocks on the enemy team. Uh, it's not like an affliction warlock where you can actually spend your whole time with uh, dots. Uh, Elemental shamans they have to flame shock everyone, but they have to also spend the lava shock, uh, lava burst. They will have also a lot of damage that they can produce, but they are very immobile. They, 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 they're going to be targeted most of the time, and they do die in RBGs. In arenas is a bit different because you cannot use, uh, you, you can use a lot of um, self peel in arenas, but in RBGs you cannot push multiple targets ex except with a thunderstorm, and even then, a leash shield is not going to save you from a melee train, and it is actually very matchup dependent. I think Elemental Shaman is a great option if you're going for a caster cleave, but then you have to think: Look, do I want to have do do I want to have a Elemental Shaman, or do I prefer to have a Shadow Priest, which has insane CC? Well, that that's a a difficult uh, point to discuss, right? Uh, Enhancement Shaman is for me a very squishy spec. I think that's the main problem. I think um, I'm going to put it in C tier with my heart being broken because I do love Enhancement Shaman. And whenever I see Enhancement Shaman in LFG and I'm making a group, I try to invite them to actually give him a chance. But in general, it just dies too quickly and it's really calm dependent. If you're not playing a melee cleave, you are going to be the one dying, like 100%. Uh, if you're playing a melee cleave though, you can make it work. You can really be annoying with the tools that you're playing. And in general, you can just burst someone down uh, very, very fast. But I think that the, the problem is right now is it's combat dependent. Uh, it doesn't work all the time and it dies very quickly or too quickly to actually uh, be useful in a match. Um, for me, Restoration Shaman is going to be... I'm going to put it in B tier with Restoration Druids. I think the AoE healing is quite nice. So that's a positive. I'm going to delete the F tier because I don't feel like there is going to be an F tier. Um, I, th I think in general Restoration Shaman is going to be a great healer. It has a lot of AoE pressure. It can also just destroy someone with Stormkeeper. You have totems that actually can multi-heal. You have a lot of CDs, but outside of the CDs you're going to die. So you will have to, to, to know that you have limits as a restoration shaman, but I think Unleash Shield 
with the water so you have minus 50 percent healing minus 50 percent damage is one of the best totems um, pvp talents that you can actually use to actually disrupt team fights in general team fight team fights are very clumped up and whenever you're doing that you're going to actually have a lot of ways to actually be annoying and do actually a lot of anti-healing anti-damage um with just one ability but it depends about your team knowing that you're going to do it or not so i think it's also very discord dependent and in general if your um, totems are going to survive or not is dependent on the enemy team if the enemy team knows look there is a restoration shaman if there is a healing tide just destroy it if there is a healing stream totem just destroy it if there is a link totem destroy it instantly construct totem instantly so you have to realize that some games you're going to feel hopeless while other games you're going to feel like a god so that's pretty much my take on restoration shamans uh, affliction warlocks for me it's very difficult to rate because i feel like it's very good but it's very dampening and there is no dampening in rbg and it feels like you're not going to kill someone solo it's very good for like a anti um like anti dispel kind of thing but i do rate it uh, i want to rate it a bit lower than balance of it because i feel like there's another spec for destruction warlocks that are going to be much more stronger in rpgs and i'm going to talk it right away i think destruction warlock is s tier uh, bane of havoc which is a pvp talent that you can take with mayhem will give you insane aoe pressure if the aoe zone is on multiple targets and you're going to do a conflag into a chaos bolt multiple chaos bolts you can also play soul fire if you want because you're not always a target you're going to be having the best time of your life. I think Destruction Warlock is actually very strong right now. It is one of the best specs. I prefer Destruction Warlock over Balance Druid. I just think Balance Druid is just super valuable for the Cyclones, for um, Mass Entanglements with Root Beam, for example. I think it's very, very strong. But I think Destruction Warlock is going to top damage if they are left alone. But in general, you're going to be the target, so you'll have to play accordingly. But in general... you. I think Destruction Warlock is just better than Affliction, although Affliction gives you Dispel Protection. You could play double Warlock team, so Affliction Warlock with a Destruction Warlock, so you have the best of both worlds. But you could also play with a Shadow Priest or an Elemental Shaman to give you that Dispel Protection that you actually need to be disruptive uh, for the enemy team. I think in general, Destruction Warlock, very good spec. Demology Warlock, on the other hand, you have pets dying very quickly. Um, I think in general... I don't know if Felguard is going to be very useful. You could play like a Succubus build with Demon Bolts, where you're going to play around basically doing a lot of damage by yourself. Um, but it does make you not likely to do max damage. You're going to have poor AoE damage. You're going to have difficulties surviving versus Feral Druids, for example, with like AoE bleeds and AoE just damage that is going to destroy your pets. And just for that reason, I think it's going to be a C tier spec. It's going to be better than a BM Hunter or a Survival Hunter because, again, the, 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 the pets are a bit more tankier. But they do die very quickly and you will have to be self-aware about the situations that you are as a Demology Warlock. Now, Warrior, and you know on this channel we do love our Warriors. I play Arms, I play Fury right now. Fury is also a blast now. The damage buffs are insane. I'm going to discuss it in a future video, so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want those kinds of videos. But again, Fury Warrior, Arms Warrior, Protection Warrior is a bit iffy, but you can make it work maybe. Um, I think I'm going to rate that first and foremost Arms Warrior. I think it is a A, a tier spec. It's going to be insane in damage proportions. Uh, if you're playing versus a melee cleave, Diver Sword is going to be invaluable. Uh, Spear of Bastion is still one of the best abilities you can press if you want to say to someone, you're going to get wrecked and you're going to stay with me. That's pretty much the ability that you want to go for. But what you could also play is the AoE bleed build, where basically you're going to dampen the whole team and you can play like an AoE dot build, where basically... Everyone is going to AoE them down with just dots, and you as a warrior, you have also a lot of AoE with Thunderous Roar, AoE Bleeds with Thunderstorm, which is not the best, but you can 
kind of make it work. Uh, you have, again, a lot of ways to do a lot of damage. And in general, you're going to be very disruptive. I think Arms Warrior is a ideal spec for that. Uh, Fury Warrior is going to be, for me, the same. But again, it's also comp def like dependent. If you're playing versus a lot of casters, I think Fury is just better. If you're playing versus a lot of melees, I think Arms is better. But the problem is, you cannot choose your spec. Actually, you can switch your spec in-game. So if you're playing versus casters, just switch into Fury. If you're playing versus melees, switch to Arms. That's my uh, take on that. I think Fury has also insane damage. Now what I'm doing is playing with Spear of Bastion. I'm going to discuss about it in a future video. A god view for Fury. It does feel good. But you can also play like an AoE bleed build if you so desire. Uh, it depends on your playstyle really. It depends on your comps. If you're like a rot comp or if you want like some big deeps right away. Uh, you have the luxury to actually choose that. And now let's talk about the last tank on the list. Protection Warrior. I think the difficulty on Protection Warrior is they do not have Leaper Legendary and even in Shadowlands it was nerfed. Um, that would be something if they actually put Leaper back and you can actually leap away with the flag three times. That would be game changer. But right now the problem is Protection Warriors, they just die too quickly. They have good damage though, so if I have to judge it just because of the damage, it could be like easily B tier, but I have to judge also the capacity to actually hold flag and to be very mobile and to be disruptive. And for me, right now it is a C tier spec. I think it's on the same level as Brewmaster. The damage is really nice though. You can do some insane damage poss possibilities with a Protection Warrior, but uh, you, you have to think about the great creator scheme of things, right? I think Protection Warrior, they just need so much more. I think PvP talents, they could just add Leaper and it would be fine. Um, I think Garden Druids being S tier for so long since a few expansions is annoying in my eyes. I think they could work a bit on RPGs, but they are not doing it for some reason. Um, but if they actually added Leaper to Protection Warrior, I think they would easily be A tier with Ventures Team Hunter. But right now it is not the case. So uh, for me, it is going to be a C tier spec. And I'm very sorry for everyone. I'm going to now um, structure the, uh, like, the, um, how it's called, tier list around tanks, melees, ranged healers. So it's easier to read. So I'm going to put tanks first, melees second, ranged third, and then healers um, fourth. So... I'm going to do it right now. And that, that is pretty much also the, the ranking. So I prefer Destruction Warlock over Balance Rate, for example. Uh, I'm going to put Rogue. I think Rogue is ahead of Frost DK and Demon Hunter because you do need a Rogue if you want to be competitive. There is no world where you're not playing with a without a Rogue. You could play with a Feral Druid, but it's going to be subpar. So... Um, I think a rogue comp is still going to be strong and necessary to actually go higher in rating. Um, the same here, I feel like this is going to be correct. Like this, more like this. And then you have, again, tanks first. And then you have melees, and then ranged. And then, of course, the healers, like this. And the same with here. I would put farmage behind BM, BM Hunter though. So this is pretty much my tier list. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And we will catch each other very soon in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.